Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Blue Chelsea TV. Chelsea's business planning and human resource practices may confound all but their blue sky thinkers, but that does not preclude them providing great entertainment. Perhaps that is where the method and the perceived madness lies. If you can't always be good, be fun, be box office. And this was a red letter day for the laptop gurus who have constructed their squad. Amid that stockpiling of 191 years of contracts across 42 players, genuine, high-class talent abounds. Cole Palmer, with a goal and three assists, looked the player of last season in a game that had threatened to get away from Chelsea in the first half. In the second, their attacking players cut wolves to ribbons, visibly enjoying themselves as they feasted on an opponent who looked a far lesser proposition than last season. Take a moment to like the video if you are enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you are bumping here for the very first time. Noni Maduk was booed from his first kick for his late night travel Instagram guide to Wolverhampton. Everything about this place is shit and responded with a 14 minute hat trick, each laid on by Palmer, Playmaker Supreme. In celebrating his third, Maduk hailed Palmer as the source of his keeping the match ball. For this week at least, though the transfer window will soon shift focus, Chelsea could celebrate being a living, breathing football team rather than the trading platform they are derided as, their new manager delighted by his team's play. His team selection had fitted rather comfortably with the policies of Chelsea's blue co-ownership. While Raheem Sterling pursues his individual training plan away from the first team squad, Mikhaila Mudrick, a winger of far less consistency, started. Another project player, Romeo Lavia, was missing with a hamstring injury, muscle problems having wrecked last season for him. The concurrent Nicholas Jackson project, making a sellable player out of the rawest of materials, continues and if every Chelsea player has a price, his will be increased by his early goal, knotted in after Palmer's corner, and an inadvertent flick from Mateus Cunha. The striker would also play a key part in Palmer's goal. Pedro Neto, wool star man when fit last season, sat on the Chelsea bench until halftime. Will Gary O'Neill come to rue the sale of Neto and Maximilian Kilman, his former defensive leader? The signs of a second half collapse were unpromising. Both were necessary sales as Wolves attempt to toe the line on profit and sustainability. There was plenty of attacking quality in the first half, but nothing like a watertight defense. For their first home match of the season, they had begun with zest. Yerson Mascara, the Colombian who was Kilman's replacement, making his home debut, flashed a highly sinkable header wide. That began an intense period of Wolves pressure Cunha's head down running to the fore. The Brazilian looked to have completed an end-to-end -end move when slotting in Jorgen Strand Larsen's pass, only for offside to flag. VAR, the great Satan of Molyneux, showed the decision to be correct. With Palmer scuffing a shot, Maduk forcing a save from Jose Sa, and Wolves winger Jean Rickner Belgard stumbling and reaching for a cross, Mudrick making an eye-catching solo slalom down the middle. The action appeared relentless, neither midfield providing any protection. When the opposition is bearing down on them, Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo continue to look like the midfield odd couple. For Wolves, Mario Lamina was outstanding when making forward runs and zinging passes from the base, but similarly struggled to curb opposing attacks. That's all for now. Like this video if you enjoyed the win this evening, comment, and subscribe. See you later with another video. Until then, goodbye.